An earlier version of this figure, nicknamed the Tombstone Diary, was included in the 1995 chapter on geology and seismology. This updated diagram illustrates the high seismic activity in the Bay Area prior to the 1906 earthquake. As you can see, there were 16 earthquakes exceeding magnitude 6.0 between 1836 and 1906. After the 1906 earthquake, seismic activity dropped dramatically because the stress was reduced on all of the faults in the region. The working group on California earthquake probabilities first convened in 1988. Estimates probabilities of earthquakes on California faults. The most recent estimate for the San Francisco Bay Area is that there is a 62% probability for at least one magnitude 6.7 or greater quake in the next 30 years. Since 1995, the probability for a magnitude 7.0 earthquake on the Hayward Rogers Creek fault system has increased from 28% to 31%. The Bay Area is located at the boundary between the North American Plate and Pacific Plate. This boundary is fractured into numerous individual faults and is known as the San Andreas Fault System. The Hayward Fault, running roughly north-south along the eastern edge of San Francisco Bay, is part of this system. It is estimated that the Hayward Fault accommodates nearly 25% of the deformation across the plate boundary. The Scenario earthquake in 1995 was a magnitude 7.0 earthquake beginning at the northern end of the Hayward Fault in San Pablo Bay. In the scenario, the fault was expected to rupture unilaterally 50 kilometers to the south in 22 seconds. Average displacement at the surface was described as one meter, approximately three feet, with an offset of as much as nine feet in certain locations. In 2006, the National Earthquake Hazards Reduction Program funded a group of 15 U.S. seismologists to develop scenario earthquakes upon which financial losses from quakes could be modeled. Five institutions participated, USGS, Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, University of California, Berkeley, Stanford University, and the URS Corporation, with USGS taking the lead. Six simulated earthquakes were selected from a suite of 35 scenarios. The six scenarios were divided into two groups. One group represented the magnitude 6.8 earthquake along the South Hayward Fault and the other a magnitude 7.0 earthquake along the full length of the Hayward Fault. Each earthquake has a diff different epicenter along the fault. This figure illustrates expected ground shaking of the magnitude 6.8 earthquake along the South Hayward Fault with on the left an Oakland epicenter, in the center a Hayward epicenter, and on the right a Fremont epicenter. These figures illustrate the magnitude 7.0 earthquake along the full length of the fault with a San Pablo epicenter on the left, an Oakland epicenter in the middle, and a Fremont epicenter on the right. The epicenter in magnitude that most closely matched the 1995 scenario earthquake is the magnitude 7.0 earthquake on the full length of the Hayward Fault with a San Pablo epicenter. Today, as it was in 1995, faults are often difficult to locate, as they can be covered with vegetation, buildings and roads, or hidden by landslides and other geological features. A great deal of what we know about earthquake faults comes from fault trenching. However, trenching in an urbanized area is difficult. Most trenches are site-oriented fault investigations undertaken to satisfy the legal requirements of the 1972 Alquist Priola Earthquake Fault Zoning Act. The USGM map of the Hayward Fault is based on reports of Alquist Priolo investigations, some public utility trenches, and scientific studies. Since 1995, technologies have either been enhanced or emerged to aid in the identification of plate boundaries. GPS, LIDAR, and INSAR provide new information to improve fault mapping, ground motion estimation, and refined earthquake probabilities. Utilizing satellite technology, GPS and INSAR are used to monitor interseismic def surface deformation along the Hayward Fault. GPS is, of course, the global positioning system developed by the Department of Defense in 1978. INSAR, or Interferometric Synthetic Aperture Radar, was developed in 1990. These technologies have been adapted to produce all-weather, day and night, high-resolution images of the Earth's surface providing useful information about the physical characteristics of the ground. LIDAR, Light Detection and Ranging, is a pulse of laser light directed at a subject from an aircraft. 
it has recently been used to provide an accurate map of the Hayward Fault. In 2007, a 1 kilometer wide by 106 kilometer long survey of the fault provided a digital elevational model. The digital model points out geological features such as sag ponds and push-up ridges associated with faults. With regular updates of the LIDAR survey, slight movements in geological features covered by vegetation will be apparent. In 2006, Google Earth published a virtual tour of the Hayward Fault online. The digital map is essentially the map created in 1992 by James J. Linkamper of USGS. However, the real map is an unruly 10 feet long. The online map overlays a LIDAR image of the near fault zone over the satellite image of the region. Since 1995, these technologies have increased our understanding of the Hayward Fault. However, the most striking difference between 1995 and today is the confluence of the development of information and its availability on the internet.